it was March of 2020 when that horrid virus caused us to have to shut all of our theaters. Is this allowed for now? No. Can you bring the volume up a little bit? <coughs> when the, the virus forced us to close all of our theaters worldwide. And I started the craziest three years of my life. So AMC actually, that's better, right? Yeah, it's a little better. Thank you for bringing the sound up. AMC is actually the fifth company that I have run as CEO since 1993. Uh, my first CEO ship, I was 38 years old. Norwegian Fiddle. Then I ran Bell Resorts in Colorado in the Rockies, the largest ski resort company in the US for 10 years. Oh, um, uh, one of my closest friends bought the NBA team in my hometown and offered me the chance to like throw away everything I was doing in life and move back to Philadelphia where I was born and run the 76ers as CEO. And I gotta say, of all the things I've done my entire life, it was a little frivolous, but that was the most fun. Uh, because I, it, didn't, it wasn't, when you were actually running an NBA team, it's not that you care about whether you win or you lose. You care about every shot. And every time your guy makes a shot, like you get up out of your chair and you jump and you scream, and when they miss it, your heart sinks, it's terrible. Um, and then I ran Starwood Hotels, big hotel company. We sold Starwood to Marriott, uh, which they were buying us, we weren't buying them. So I, w I knew what I was doing, but I was putting myself out of work. Somebody called me and said, AMC, we're looking for a CEO. And that was at the end of 2015. And I looked back at my whole career and thought, what's the common thread other than I was running companies? And the common thread is I was doing fun things. Uh, hotels, cruise ships, ski resorts, sports teams. Movies sounded fun, it was right up my alley. So on January 4, 2016, I took over AMC. We were the second largest movie theater chain in the US. A year later, we were the largest movie theater chain in the world. And for the first four years that I ran AMC, I don't wanna say we were fat, dumb, and happy, but we were fat, dumb, and happy because everything was just fine. And we were the most successful movie theater company on the planet. The biggest, I think the best. I was sure that we were the most innovative, most forward thinking. And then out of nowhere comes COVID. And AMC was doing five and a half billion dollars of revenue in a year. And in a week, a week, our revenues went to zero. And when I say zero, I don't mean like they went from five and a half billion to a billion. I don't mean they went from five and a half billion to a hundred billion. I mean, they went to nothing in a week. And big companies aren't designed to do that. Big companies have fixed costs. Big companies have obligations. We had assets in 15 countries on two continents. Uh, and all of a sudden, we were just lighting a match to cash. Uh, hello, welcome. Hi. <laughs> you haven't missed a thing. Great. Uh, uh, we were just lighting a match to cash. And we were burning through $100 million of cash a month. And like the AMC before the pandemic, number one, we had $600 million in the bank. And number two, the AMC before the pandemic, we were generating $800 million a year of cash. Like everything was fine. Good years, bad years, big years, slow years. Eight hundred million of cash, new cash. All of a sudden, we're not generating any cash. And that $600 million we had, it's disappearing $100 million a month. Well, I was really good at math in high school, see? And I can multiply, or divide, I guess. $600 million divided by $100 million, that's six. That means in six months, we're gonna be out of cash. That's like a big problem. It was a stressful time. And we did everything you could imagine to try to save the company. Reduce expenditures, raise money, borrow money, convince the lenders to give us money, 
convince the landlords not to accept, expect we pay them rent, we no money. We did a whole bunch of things. And over and over, in April and July and October of 2020, we kept on doing things to save the company. But by December, we realized that this was gonna be a long haul. When the theaters were shut in March, uh, people thought the pandemic was gonna keep us shut for two months. How about like two years, you know? Our theaters were shut for a year, we didn't have any movies for a year after that. And so in December of 2020, after a lot of thought, we realized that we just couldn't keep raising two, three, four million dollars and like limp along for two more months or three more months. It wasn't. So we announced publicly in December of 20 that we needed to raise $750 million or we weren't gonna make it. So we figured that would last us well into the summer of 2021. And the press was filled with, they're never gonna raise the money. The press was filled with, they're going to <coughs> They're disappearing, movie theaters are dead. Dead, 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 and dead. Again, can we turn the volume up on this thing just a little bit more if we can? Um, <coughs> but in January, we were able to announce that we had raised not 750 million, but 1.2 billion dollars. Yeah. And that meant we were gonna make it. I put out a press release, I swear this is not on very loud. Can you guys hear in the back? No. No. It's not on. Louder. We're, we're working on it. Like we're working on it. Yeah. Is it on? No. no. <laughs> That's what, well. How's that? No. How's that? Nope. Is it a different mic? Ah. ah. Well, we're, if you couldn't hear in the back, I said we raised a billion two in January 2021, which means we're going to make it. And I put out a press release. On a Monday morning, January 25th, to be precise, 2021, that bankruptcy was off the table. Now, does the sound disappear again? Yep. Yeah. 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 What did you say? Good line. Ah. <laughs> How's that? There we go. Let's see if this works. Uh, and for how long? This will motivate me to speak shorter. <laughs> oh. oh! So anyway, um, yes, still on? No, no, no. Uh, it's going in, it's going in now. You don't have another mic, do you? Uh, yeah, we're going to run one down. <laughs> They're trying to get another mic. We'll see what happens. Anyway, I'll talk loud, too. So, um, we said bankruptcy's off the table. The next day, test, the test. next day, what? Oh. <laughs> this is the worst microphone I've ever had. <laughs> I got a loud voice. Can you hear me up here or not? Yeah. Sort of, yeah. We're investing, we haven't invested. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm just gonna go, tell you what, I'm gonna go in the middle. Okay, they're working another mic, but look this way. I'm closer to everybody. I'll talk loud. How's that? Yeah. So, anyway, the next day after that press release, the craziest thing happened. You guys showed up. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. It was $1.91 in early January. $1.91, that's pretty low. The day, the Friday before we put out the press release that said bank was off the table, the stock was at three bucks. We put out the press release the Monday morning before the market opened, bank was off the table, stock exploded to five bucks. Now, a $2 price increase doesn't sound like a lot. But two dollars on three dollars—that's up sixty-six percent in a day. That's a lot. That was Monday. On the Wednesday, 
It also closed Tuesday at five bucks. On the Wednesday, it closed at twenty dollars. It quadrupled in one day. And the trading volume in AMC stock was so ridiculous. At, on, at that time, we had 100 million shares outstanding. On the New York Stock Exchange on the Wednesday, oh, I'm sorry, we had 100 million shares outstanding, but at that time, we were a majority owned by a Chinese company, the largest movie theater chain in China. They had 50 million shares, and they never traded a one. Now, they're long, they bought AMC in 2013, they got out in 21, so they're long gone. We're all American today as we were when we were founded 100 years ago in Kansas City. But, so we only had 50 million shares that actively traded, because the Chinese company had 50 million shares and they never sold a one. On that Wednesday, January 27 of 2021, the trading volume in AMC stock was one billion, 250 million shares. We only had 50 million shares. It meant that like the entire ownership of AMC was turning over every 20 minutes on the New York Stock Exchange. And the stock went from five to 20. And that was the arrival of the apes. And I know that there are maybe two people in this auditorium tonight who came to see Mafia Mark. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't have a clue why this guy in the Norwegian sweater the wrong one. is I interrupting agree. your movie. <laughs> <laughs> but the rest of you, like your apes, right? Yeah! yeah. That's what I would have thought. So, you guys arrived, and I know when. It was January 27th of 2021. And it's now April of 2023, and you're still here. And we're not leaving. Yeah. yeah. We're not I'm leaving. fucking leaving. And I gotta tell you what you did, because you should be very proud. First of all, you attach yourself to a really good company, and 200 million times a year, we make people smile because we get you out of your house. We get you to place, and for like, oh, thank you. Uh, is this working? Wow. Uh, hopefully, no. Oh, <laughs> I'll just talk loud. <laughs> yep, yep. I got a big booming voice. So, uh, 200 million. you saved movie going in America. That's what you did. You attach yourself to a good company that makes people happy, that amuses them and entertains them and distracts them from all the stresses and problems in their daily lives. And you sort of do it for like, you know, 10, 15 bucks. It's kind of affordable, really, when you look at how much more expensive other entertainment choices are in the country. But if you hadn't shown up, we wouldn't be here today. And Wall Street would have destroyed us. But because of your enthusiasm and your passion and your commitment and the fact that you trusted us with money, we're here. And we ended December, these are the most recent public numbers, with $840 million of cash. Now, Let's compare that to the second largest, and we're the largest movie theater chain in the world. Let's compare that to the second largest movie theater chain in the world. They went bankrupt. They ran out of money. And this theater where we are tonight, this was an arc light. This wasn't an AMC theater. They ran out of money, and they're not coming back. And there are a lot of chains that didn't survive the pandemic. But I can tell you with one caveat, uh, it's an important caveat that as long as one thing happens right in the next 90 days, there's basically not a chance in the world that AMC doesn't survive this 
still long aftermath of the, of the pandemic. And again, it's a combination of our, our smart actions as a company and your faith in us. Because I want to tell you what the caveat is. So you gave us the strength to outlast the pandemic. And when, I, and when I say outlast the pandemic, I just want to give you a couple of numbers. Sorry to be so like business-like, but you know, that's what I do for a living, right? So, <laughs> the basic size of this industry is called the domestic box office. That's what are the ticket sales in all the theaters, all brands, all companies in the United States and Canada, that's the domestic box office. For five years in a row, from 2015 to 2019, the box office was never less than $11 million. <coughs> never more than 12, never less than 11. It, was, it never actually hit 12, it was always in the 11s. Some years a little higher, some years a little lower, always in the 11s. COVID comes. So in 2020, the box office was $2 billion, down 80%. That's, a, like, that's a big decline. And by the way, that down 80%, that was all January, February. It was down like 100% like April to December. Well, <coughs> that was a low point. In 2021, it more than doubled to four and a half billion. In 2022, the year we just completed, it was seven and a half billion. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, seven and a half billion is more than four and a half billion. Four and a half billion is more than two billion. So you can see recovery is starting to happen, except seven and a half billion is still 35% down from the pre-pandemic levels. And movie theaters have a lot of fixed costs. All the profit is in the last quarter of attendees. So if you're down 35%, you're not making any money, like none. And that's why there were so many theater companies were collapsing. And they were collapsing because they were running out of cash. <coughs> they literally, you know, they went to bank up. There's nothing there. By contrast, because we sold stock into the market, we raised so much money that we could outlast the pandemic. And now we get to this year. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we're up at least another 25% in 2023 over 2022. We won't know exactly until December, but we got a fighting shot to the box office this year will be somewhere between nine and $10 billion, up compared to seven and a half billion last year. Like, again, nine to 10 is not 11, but it's a lot closer to 11 to, than it was when we were two, right? So. The health, and, and when the box was 11 billion, AMC was making a lot of money. 11 and a half to two, to four and a half, to seven and a half, this year maybe nine to 10. It's very clear that the movie theater industry is on the way back up. But it's also clear we're gonna make a lot more money when it's 11 billion than 10 or nine. And what that means in my mind is I need to have enough cash in the bank that we can tell Wall Street today, like we did in 2021, bankruptcy is off the table. Not for now, but forever. Go! And when, when we have enough resources in the bank, combined with a, big, a box office big enough so that we're generating a lot of cash again, that's what destroys the short thesis. The short thesis are people betting against AMC. And as much as you all like to tell each other on Twitter that <laughs> if you just like do this or do that, you'll bust the shorts, and that's not what busts the shorts. What busts the shorts is when the company succeeds and when the company cannot fail. And what there are two things we need to make sure that we don't fail. Number one, we need a rising box office so that we can really be profitable. Like we had positive EBITDA 
in 2022. That was encouraging. Now EBITDA is called earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. It's the cash you generate from operations before you pay your interest and your, your, your taxes. So AMC was doing about $800 million in EBITDA before the pandemic. The first year of the pandemic, we did negative $999 million in EBITDA. <laughs> it's a number so big, I can't even think about it. 2021, it was negative $291 million. Last year, it was positive $46 million. So like, you can see the trend. And if the box office this year is a billion, a billion and a half, two billion, two and a half billion more than last year, the EBITDA is gonna be a lot more than 46 million. It just has to be. Uh, and so the first thing that we need is a rising box office and new earnings. But the second thing we need is to absolutely know that we have cash in the bank, which takes me all the way to March 14. Because we had a big shareholder vote and we asked you to let us do a lot of things, put the so-called APE and the AMC shares back together into one, and see if we could raise some cash based on the higher price where this blended AMC APE would trade rather than where the APE was trading by itself. And you voted yes. And you voted yes, 88 to 12. Oh. 88 to 12. And there's. By the way, don't ever believe what you read on Twitter, <laughs> except what I write. What I write is true, because I have a bunch of lawyers that are like hanging by my toenails if I say it's not true. But uh, so people are saying, "Oh yeah, well, like you rigged the vote because like the apes voted yes and Antara voted yes." And, but here's what's interesting: we announced the results of the vote, and we made sure that we announced the vote not just of how the apes voted or how Antara voted, but how the common AMC shareholders voted. And that's, like, that's only you. There are no institutions. I mean, the index funds are in the AMC common, but it's mostly retail investors. And even the AMC shares voted 72 to 26 in favor of all those proposals that we put out there for your consideration. Now, I want to remind everybody what it means to get a 72-26 vote. You watch any of these politicians when they're elected? <laughs> a big win is they win 51-49. <laughs> a landslide is 53-47. That's a landslide. We won this vote 72-26 amongst the common and 88-12 with everybody. That's a huge landslide vote support for the proposals that we asked you to decide. And what that means is if we can implement the shoulder vote, it means we can raise cash whenever we need to. If we can raise cash whenever we need to, we're not ever going to go broke. Except somebody filed suit right away Ooh. to try and walk it. Ooh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and I kept on thinking, are these people crazy? <laughs> because, because the shareholders just voted to save the company. And if you win, like, you're just going to put us back in the crapper again. Uh, well, we sat down with the plaintiff's attorneys, and we came up with a very quick settlement. And this settlement, which is actually a pretty good settlement, I kind of not kind of, I'm glad we were able to do this because it gave us an excuse to do it. In the settlement, we gave, we're giving free, tax free too, by the way, extra shares to the common shareholders. Because the plaintiff said, oh, well, you, you sold so many shares of the ape at a cheap price. That, so the common shareholders, they, they saw a lot of the ownership of the company drift towards the preferred shareholders. And we rectified that by just with a, you know, magic wand, okay, well, we'll just give some more shares to the common. The common shares will own a little bit more, and everybody's happy. And the plaintiff's lawyers thought that was great, and we thought it was great, and the common shares could like it because you're getting extra shares. And so we went to the judge, 
and said, Your Honor, like we settled the case, there's no more lawsuit, would you pr please approve it? And the judge said, uh, well, she didn't say whether she would approve it or not, but she said, like, I want to do this the normal way. And the normal way in Delaware is it takes two to four months to approve a settlement. So we'd ask the judge, could like, you do it in a week? <laughs> and the judge said, no, no, you said yes, yes, but she said no, no. <laughs> so she said we're doing it the normal way. So, uh, so we had this vote, we won the vote, we settled the case, but nothing is gonna happen until the judge in Delaware approves the settlement, which I guess is gonna happen in a couple of months. So right now it's status quo, right? We're still selling, we're, Ape's still trading in the New York Stock Exchange, AMC shares, common shares, trade in the New York Stock Exchange. There's, they haven't been put together yet. There's no reverse stock split. Uh, but assuming that the judge approves the settlement, which sometime in the next, I wouldn't say days or weeks, but probably months, but not like 20 months, like you know, two, three, four months, something like that, um, then we can actually implement your suggestion. And when we do that, I said there was one caveat, right? Uh, the caveat is we, we need this judge to approve the settlement. But when she does, if she does, but when she does, I hope she does, that means that I know in my heart of hearts, for the first time in three years, I can relax. Because <laughs> I will know then that we made it. Because no matter what the world throws at us, bubonic plague, dengue fever, whatever, whatever the world throws at us, <laughs> we'll be able to raise the money we need to survive it. And at the same time that that's going on, the box office is rising. And there are a lot of big movies coming out in 2021. I mean, a lot. <coughs> Super Mario Brothers. Oh, yeah. Look, it's, done half, it's going to do a half a billion dollars just in the US. Uh, and there are so many big movies coming out over the next seven, eight, nine months. And I think the box office in 24, we, we know the slate that's coming. Uh, I think the movies in 24 are gonna even be bigger than the movies in 23. Uh, you know, and like, there are some real movies coming out. This this movie Oppenheimer that Chris Nolan's making, that's right. it's fantastic. It's the story of the creation of the atom bomb back in the 1940s. Uh, brilliant. Uh, the Indiana Jones movie this summer, is gonna be so wonderful. Uh, the, the Mission Impossible movie that's coming out in July, I think it is, it's gonna be so good. Did any of you see the, the, it's all over YouTube, the trailer of like Tom Cruise like jumping off the cliff in a motorcycle? He really did that. I saw and he's such a perfectionist. He wanted to get a really good shot. He did it like 35 times in a weekend. He literally took a motorcycle and drove it off a cliff and open a parachute, which is a long way down. And you would think, like, first of it was me, like, I wouldn't be riding a motorcycle off a cliff. And if I did it once, I would certainly not do it 34 more times in a weekend just to get a better picture. A uh, lot of big movies coming. So that's the only thing we need, guys. Uh, and the only thing we need is for the, 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 the courts to approve the settlement so we can implement all of this and know that we made it. Uh, and I, you know, I, I, I don't know what the judges are gonna do, so I, I hope she says yes. If she doesn't say yes, we'll, Bob and we even do something clever. And we'll figure it out. We figured out everything so far. Whatever they do, whatever the world throws at us, we'll figure it out. But I hope she sells it, and so agrees to approve the settlement. And if she does, when she does, uh, then I know we made it. And then we can just start focusing on the future. Like, what do we want to do with this company? There are a lot of movie theaters that we could still improve the quality. There are a lot of movie theaters that we could acquire at very cheap prices. Because a lot of the other circuits are just failing uh, miserably, you know? Uh, and there are some things we could buy outside the movie theater business if we had the financial resources to do it. And if we can sell stock to raise cash, we could buy other things too. Uh, so it, it's so exciting to think about 
playing offense again, which is what we were the way we were running the company until 2019. Um, but for the last three years, we've been playing defense. So we've been trying to protect against collapse as opposed to trying to do everything we can just to drive glory and success. And that's where we finally are, almost. As soon as we get through this last little hurdle, this last little hurdle of getting, being able to implement the vote that you all approved ADA 12. And you know, I, I can taste it, it's so close. But when that day comes, and there's, you know, maybe it's May, maybe it's June, maybe it's July, um, maybe it's August. The question is, what do we do with your company then? And I keep on saying it's your company because you own it. Like, uh, by the way, I own it too. I'm the largest individual shareholder of this company. And I love this company, and I'm very proud of what we've done. And I'm very committed to its future. Um, but I just think there are so many good things we can do to take AMC to the next level. And it's so exciting for me that we're gonna be doing it together. That's why I'm here tonight. This is the 22nd one of these that I've done. And I, I said earlier, you know, when I was just welcoming you earlier, like to me this is the most enjoyable nights of the year. Because I know I'm doing all the talking now, but when we're done watching Mafia Mama, I'm gonna be out there and you're gonna talk. And I'm gonna talk to each one of you one-on-one -on -one and hear what you have to say. And it fills me with so much excitement and determination to do great things for this company because of your commitment to it and your enthusiasm for it. And that is very sincerely stated. Uh, there's like no company I've ever heard of before that got adopted by retail investors <laughs> the way AMC has in the last two years. And you all know I tweet. And I tweet like almost every day. Yeah, you like that? I, yeah. I tweet almost every day of my life. And by the way, I write to myself. That's not like some guy in the PR department. I write them. Because I tell you what's on my mind and what I want to talk about. And um, I don't only write the tweets. I read what you send back. Uh, I put out a couple of tweets the other day. There were 4,000 replies <laughs> to the two tweets. 4,000. I read every single one of them. I sat there on my phone and my iPad, <laughs> scrolling and scrolling. But I read them all because I get to hear what's on your mind. Like, and a few of you hate me. <laughs> but most of you, 88%, you know, um, you love what we're doing. You've been very supportive of my leadership. But what I can, what I can tell in these things is how proud you are to be part of this company, part of this community, part of a movement. And look, what we're doing for, in addition to all the investor stuff and sort of how different it is that there's a dialogue between regular Americans and the senior management team of meaningful, meaningful brands, you know, uh, it's something more than that. It's this is what America likes to do. Americans have been going to the movies for a century, for a hundred years. We've been at the center of the cultural fabric of this country. And you and me, we decided over the last two, three years, we're just not gonna let anybody take that away from us or from our kids <coughs> or from our, from our grandkids. Like movie going's fun. You know, if the, Back in 2017, all the 25-year-old journalists were saying, movie theaters are an anachronism, like the future is you know, streaming, and oh, you can watch the movie from home. Then COVID came. And guess what we all learned? We were imprisoned in our houses and apartments for a year and a half. Okay, your house is nice, your apartment's nice, but you like to get out every once in a while. You'd like to be with people. Uh, and it's a pretty cheap day, all things considered, to get two, three hours of great entertainment. And so I think we all realized again that the, you know, the future was like 
let's go out of our house. Let's go be with people. Let's, let's enjoy living. And I'm going to leave you with this one thought. Just to let you know how popular movie going actually is. And so how important it is that you saved it for us and for the generations to come. We all know America is a sports crazy country, right? We, we love our sports. Uh, my team won in the NBA playoffs tonight. 3-0 against the Brooklyn Nets. Go second. Joel Embiid. Joel Embiid, MVP, baby. <laughs> he deserves it. Um, if you take, let's say NBA. So if you take all 30 teams in the NBA, all 82 games, the entire league, every game, every team, every city, every home game, and you add up the attendance for the NBA. And you add to that the attendance of every National Hockey League team. Every team, every city, all season long. Throw in the NFL, it's pretty popular, right? <laughs> every NFL team, I think there are 32 NFL teams. Every team, every game, all season long. Throw in the playoffs, why not? Throw in the Super Bowl, why not? Every game. Add in Major League Baseball, it's a 162 game season. Every team, every city, every game, 162 games, all year long. And while we're at it, throw in Major League Soccer for, for, good, for good measure. <laughs> Add the attendance of all that, of all the professional sports, 2019, the last year before the pandemic, America's movie theaters sold seven times the number of tickets as all of professional sports combined. Mm. That's how popular movie going is. Mm. It is the second most popular out of home activity in the United States, second only to going out to eat in a restaurant. <coughs> what America does America goes to movie theaters. And because of you, not only were they able to do that for the last hundred years, they're going to be able to do that for the next hundred years. So with that, uh, all I can say from the depths of my heart, thank you for what you've done for this company. Thank you for what you've done for this company. We're here because of you. We have a bright future because of you. Uh, and um, America owes you a little debt of gratitude for taking a glorious company that has a very proud heritage and giving us a very proud future to come. With that, we're going to watch a movie together. When the movie's over, I'm going to feel. I'm going to sit right here. I'm going to watch it with you. I actually picked this movie myself because I saw the trailer and I thought it looked really funny. I don't know if it is going to be funny, but the trailers, I know at least two minutes are funny. The are funny. Uh, we're going to go outside, take pictures, I'll sign stuff, we'll talk. It's going to be a late, long night, but uh, uh, thanks for coming to AMC. Thanks for coming not only tonight, but thanks for coming for the last two years. Thanks for coming for the years ahead. I enjoyed it. Let's watch it. Adam Aaron, April 20th, 2023. The Silverback. Right, let's, let's roll the tape. Let's go. <laughs> AMC, baby.